Okay, hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 2 where I forget my but got butterflies in my tummy right now like oh my gosh so um but okay so I haven't done anything yet uh, I'm gonna go mine a little bit uh, just to make sure we get the upgrades and stuff um because we just have a couple more we can get uh, we need to get Let's go maybe somewhere new. Besides this. Really? Oh, should we need platinum? That's right. I was like, what did we need? But we need the one that we don't have any of. All right, I won't make I won't I won't force you guys to watch this, but this is what I'll be doing for a minute. I want to point out really quick: this planet says it has like a bunch of platinum, and it did, it had way more palladium. But I also really like the name Serapai. I don't know how you'd say that. Serapai means ever upward. I'm still making my list for my Mass Effect Andromeda character names. I don't know what language it is, Serapai. I don't know. It's probably not Salarian. It's probably a sorry, but. I'm still, I have, I have, I have a couple names that I'm leaning towards, but I'm still making a list. I like to, I like my names to mean something. Oh my gosh, you guys, look! I just discovered this area. It's in the Rosetta Nebula, but apparently there's, a, there's an ancient lost civilization. Apparently that's on, I haven't found Joab yet. I'm gonna go in order. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read it in order. Anomaly detected. Ooh! Okay, Joab is a two-moon habitable planet that is most well known for its mass extinction event. Thousands of years ago, Joab was home to a primate-like space ring civilization as well as abundant flora and fauna. However, this could only be deduced from time capsules put in the ground outside habitation centers. All cities and ha detectable dwellings were targeted in a massive orbital bombardment that turned them into vapor. The resulting dust shroud killed all photosynthetic life and all fauna dependent on it. Today, humans have recolonized the planet and are rapidly introducing their own species, beginning with cyanobacteria and hetero heterotrophic bacteria, to bring a suitable level of oxygen and nitrogen for respiration. Atmospheric pressure is sea level, uh, at sea level is double of Earth. Visitors with upper respiratory infections, emphysema, cancer, or history of thoracic surgery should consult with their physician before landing on Juab. Alright, okay. We're gonna go look at this one now. Laban. Laban is a desert world with sea upon sea of scorching hot iron oxide, wearing away marbleized cliffs. Whole cliffs! Holy crap! Its atmosphere is thick and layered with significant levels of oxygen trapped in her upper helium layer. Initially, surveyors detected traces of iridium from orbit, only to find a surprising archaeological discovery. The iridium came from bunkers on the surface, blown apart by a dreadnought class weapon. Dun, da, da. The logical conclusion was that the civilization on Joab had reached Laban, and its outposts were destroyed to make their extermination complete. <laughs> Uh, and then we have Mizraim. Mizraim, yeah. A small gas giant. Mizraim is primarily hydrogen and methane around a rocky core. There's no remaining trace of civilization from Joab on Mizraim itself, but debris orbiting the planet indicates the artificial satellites were once in place before being destroyed. No! Oh, what's this one? I didn't see this one. Oh, the fuel, fuel depot is right next to the, right next to the gas giant. Nice. A uh, hydrogen helium gas giant Goliath's orbit takes it near the system's mass relay, a useful event for drive core discharges and automated helium-3 refueling platforms. Unfortunately, its orbit is currently taking it away from the relay and has continued this inconvenience for the next three galactic standard years. <laughs> That's awesome! It will continue this inconvenience, <laughs> dang that planet. Alright, back to mining really quick. I think we're, we're gonna have enough soon-ish, but yeah. We'll start with you, I have detected an anomaly. Alright, let's see what the anomaly is. Sensors. Mercenary to take on planet service communications match blue suns and coding protocols. Possible location. No! <laughs> For outside of illegal archaeological. No! Are you freaking joking me? I can't leave this. Freaking! I have I have two missions I can do. We are not leaving this undone. Oh my gosh! If I have to, I will come back and not do it right now, but I'm pretty sure I have a buffer of two missions I can do. 
Are you joking me? <laughs> like, the, the, huh, my heart, like, I, I am not leaving that. I am not leaving that undone. It'd be interesting to get Zaid's opinion. I want to bring, I mean, I do want to bring, uh, I want to bring out uh, Samara and Legion, but I don't think Zaid will say anything, but we'll bring him out. We'll bring him out for kicks. This is me. This is all me. There's no way I can let this go undone. Inferno grenade. It looks like it's all we can get. Ooh, cool. I like that. All right. Zaid, what you have? Geth bolt. Right. I, I like the idea. I think the vindicator is better. We got the viper. Okay. Oh wait, he has a. I didn't realize he had a sniper rifle as well. I thought he'd have like a shotgun and a and an assault rifle. But I mean, we're 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 spread pretty even. We're good. He they both got the sniper rifles, but Thane has the locust and he has the battle rifle. Oh, and what do I want? I want. Do I want the arc projector? I don't think I want the arc projector. I don't want the firestorm. I don't want the cane. I, I think I'm just gonna have to go with the missile launcher. Mm, yeah. Against humans and machinery, like pretty stationary machinery, it is efficient. Against like uh, they have like uh, flying things. That's also pretty useful. All right. Ooh. Illegal archaeological activity. There's no way. There's no way I'm leaving that undone. I. It makes me. It makes my heart hurt. Every now and then, I'm, I'm, I get like tears in my eyes when we come across a site that has been looted, and it's happened. It's happened many times. Massive sites. This one we called, we actually called it the Citadel just for fun. There were, I mean, there were, there were how, like, pits everywhere that had, like, uh, that had had structures at one point. And they were completely blown over. They were dug out, like, completely dug out. In this, there were, like, there were, like, ten. Ten pit house locations. And we could see where, like, the rubble had collapsed, which is kind of normal. But you could see where, like, some of it had been just, like, completely shoved over because it was in a completely different direction from the rest of the fall. Um, or you could see where it had stayed stacked, like, hidden under, like, tree roots and stuff. And and in a site like that, you expect to find pottery everywhere. You expect to find projectile points, flakes, huge bifaces, little tiny ones. You expect to find all kinds of things. Drills, scrapers, everything. We found nothing. There were some flakes there and little tiny pieces of ceramic. And that was it. We could not find a single tool in the entire area. And, and you could see there, there was a sign. It was one of those areas where actually a sign had been posted by like, the government, who knows, way back when. And somebody, and it said, you know, like, you know, this is an archaeological site. You know, looting is illegal. Basically, we'll slap you on the wrist if we catch you. You know what I mean? It's not, it's never enforced. You can't really, unless you have somebody watching it 24-7. Um, and somebody had taken one of the signs and folded it in half. And, like, basically just as a screw you type thing. And I was like, you don't un it just makes me so upset. It's like, this could have been something wonderful. We could have made something with this. We could have learned so much from this. It was the only place in the area that there were structures. The only cons... There were two... I think there were two or three other places that had, like, one or two structures near them. And... But this was the only area where there was such a concentrated, like, little... It wasn't quite a village. It was more like a giant storage area. Like, a giant living area. And... Oh, it was so, I, I, I was just sitting there, like, in the middle of one of them, taking the notes that I was required to take, and I was just like, what could we have found here if people hadn't have been stupid? Because all they're doing is taking it and selling it on the black market, or, or even the gray market, you know what I mean? Antiquities markets, like, 
Makes me so upset. It makes me so upset. I just, I can't even express how upset it makes me. Can you put this on? Okay, it's already using it. Come on. Oh, wow, Shepard. Why are we not? Whoa, that was really weird. I like didn't come up over the top. That was really weird. Woo! Let's throw that one in there. That looks cool. <laughs> it's useful against armor, I know. So that was probably a little bit of a waste, but... Tee! Stand up, guy. Oh, no. Uh, it... Aw, oh, dang. I think it worked. Yep, yeah, okay. Concussive shot. No, oh, let's do a grenade! I love grenades! In Witcher 3, I'm just starting to use the grenades more. It's been quite fun. It's been, it's been quite enjoyable. Let's throw him. Yay! Grenade! <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh, and he's frozen. I love cryo ammo. I was always an inferno gal. But cryo ammo is very useful. Hey, it's a Mako. I can walk over here. I kinda thought I couldn't wouldn't be able to. Oh, they're trying to hide the, the element zero that I so desperately need. It'd be very interesting to bring Zaid and Thane out on a mission. They're two very different soldier types, you know what I mean? Well, Thane's not a soldier, he's an assassin, like... And Zaid's a mercenary, like... <laughs> uh, that would be, it would be interesting. Whoa! That's different! Yeah, we don't usually have cutscenes into these. Or... Loading screens, I guess, more accurately. That was interesting. Hi, yo, what's up? Oh, Thane looks so awesome with the freak. Okay. Hey, hey, while he's on his like hold too. That's that's good. That's a good time for that. Perfect. Oh, I see you, soldier. Um. Come on, can't be braced. Can't be braced. Dang it! Still around. Not exactly sure where they are. Oh, I think they're waiting for us. Oh, there they are. Shoot. Uh, is this offer ad adequate? Come on out. Can't reach you from there. really fun because I used to do the uh, the Inferno and Concussive Shock combination with Garrus actually in Mass Effect 3. 
Oh, there's another guy. Hi. Why were you just, like, waiting back there? And there's more guys behind us. Are you all alone? Looks like you're all alone. Yep, looks like it. Throw a grenade in there! Throw a warp in there! to sneak up on us. All right, all right, all right. I'm, I'm curious, though. Okay, so this is what they're shipping out. It's like they're trying to reinforce the excavation. So it's not just the stuff, the, anything that they're finding is probably underground. Dude, could I just, like, walk back out? Like, would, or would it have a loading screen? What is that? Personal locker. We'll see what's in the personal locker. So this is more their living quarters area. Not really gonna find anything, but they've got internal heating. Nice. Like, just natural internal heating. Med kit, that's good. I need that. Computer terminal. I'm nervous about the computer terminal. I think I accessed one once on one of these shorter missions, and it... It messed me up. It, like, ended it. Well, it probably wouldn't. There's, like, several places to go. Oh. Commander Santiago, I hope you're doing well. We require services once again in the transport of ourselves, our equipment, and our recovered artifacts. I have dispatched our representative to meet with you regarding the details of the transaction. Given the sensitive nature of our cargo, we expect to trust in the matter. So this isn't even, like, just, like, mercenaries. This is actually, like, like research people, scholarly people, who are doing illegal archaeological activity. That's even worse! Let's make a deal. Dr. Farron, of course you can count on us to offer you escort and transportation. We have sent men ships your way in good faith. No wonder it's got kind of nice facilities because it was like scholarly types and they didn't want to rough it. Ah, uh, they probably got the text. This is my job. It's me to the temp. If this was legal, that's what the temps do. We do the hard work. <laughs> I'm like really uneasy about like pulling things out of personal lockers. I'm getting all this money and I don't need it. Was that what? I feel like that's maybe more the way we're supposed to go in this way. I mean, to do an excavation like this, like, to be honest with you guys, I've never actually done an excavation. I'm a survey archaeologist. Out west, you do more survey type than you do um, excavation type stuff. Because um, it's just so much, there's no, there's, mu there's no grass out here, you know? So there's no dirt, really. It's just, like, sand and rock and, like, anything that you find is just going to be laying on the surface, basically. Whereas out west, um, the dirt, like, accumulates and every, like... Out, 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 or out west, like everything's washing away. Basically, the ground is basically washing away, in a way, in, like in more. But it, out east, the ground is more like it, it's washing down, but accumulating and piling and piling. So they have to walk like I think they have to walk like twenty meters and then do test pit like or uh, test test potholes or something. They basically take like a little shovely thing and they do like every twenty meters they'll stop and do like a really quick test dig to see if there's anything if they can see anything in the layers, in the strata of the dirt. Um, whereas out west, we just walk for miles and miles and miles, and we're like, oh look, there's stuff, oh look, there's something. Or sometimes there's nothing, you know? Like sometimes there's absolutely nothing, and that's always really boring. Um, but, excuse my vanilla Coke. But yeah, I've never done an excavation really, but I know how to do one. I, I know the basics. Okay, so it was connected. I wish I knew more how to do one, but you know, it's, uh, it's all good. This is definitely, uh, to do something like this would be like, what? Like where you're actually going really deep underground. And this is probably stuff that's been added by them. 
you know? And, but like, the, the fact that they're finding all this stuff, like, is kind of crazy. I know this is... Uh, oh, hey, wow. Oh, man, hi. Did not see you there. He's got a shotgun! He's got a shotgun! Okay. Oh boy. Oh boy, there's more coming. This is kind of a close quarters thing. Get off! Stay! Oh my gosh, they're all already dead. Taking cover. I am stuck. I'm stuck! Gosh dang it, Shepard! Fire in the hole for the blue suns! Get up! Oh my gosh! Ah! Oh my gosh, thank you. Freaking about time. Wake up! Wakey wakey! Why is nobody coming after us? I'm confused. Why is that guy back there and not doing anything? He's like not moving. Ooh, nice. Thank you. So these guys are just chilling up there. What in the world? It's a Prothean Memorabilia! It's a Prothean Pyramid! It's a huge one though! I'm pretty sure it is. It looks just like the ones in Mass Effect, except I think it's probably bigger, but it could just be perspective. Whoa, and what was it doing underground? I guess, okay, it could have been buried, obviously. It could have been buried, but like, it feels like it was done in, the ones that we found were on the surface, but that's because we didn't go underground very often. So it all just depends on your situation. Where you're at, how things are going, what, you know, your, your viewpoint is always skewed. A little bit, depending on the circumstances. Like, weather plays a big... Like, we'll find a lot more crap. Or, crap. <laughs> we'll find... Well, we can't find crap, but... We'll find a lot more stuff, most likely, on, um... Days when it's cloudy. We'll find less, probably, in the early morning. It's more difficult to see things on the ground in the early morning. Wow, that was nice. Except it's, we're still having problems with this dang nab. Like, I don't know what it is, but we're having problems. Hi! <laughs> I don't think that was me. I think that was actually Thane, but... <laughs> Could you move that? Thank you. Alright, I'll get shield. You... What the heck? I mean, I know it's, it's not just the loading, though. It's like... Something else is causing trouble here. All good? Friggin. Why are we finding so much refined element zero here? I don't want refined element zero. Lieutenant Locke, once the artifact is secured and in transit, your orders are to take your men and rendezvous with Captain Voorhees by the MSV Strontium Mule in the Arn Larkin system in the Omega Nebula. Assist Voorhees with the capture if needed. Oh, so they're like planning to take it, like from. I mean, it sounds like it, right? That just seems like really bad business practices to like screw over your customers. Recapture the derelict ship. What? <gasps> oh my gosh! This is cool. This is uh, this is kind of more than. I remember there was one I could like you could like climb up it and like go to the top and there was like something in it like a child's toy or something. I remember that. <gasps> Let's see.
Oh, it matches her eyes. Oh, she's... <gasps> this is huge! It's not just like a... Oh my gosh, it was a piece of, like, the Daynab stuff that we... From the first game! Oh! That's it! Recovered part the umbrella eliminated Blue Sun's presence at dig site? That's it! We're not gonna say anything about the fact that this was like... Oh, what the fuck? What is it? It is a be beacon! It was part of a beacon! Like, I thought it was like Prothean video log and it was gonna be like, you know, oh, documenting our findings. No, it was an actual beacon! Wow! I feel like that should have more to do with the story! That's a big deal! But maybe all, I think may, I think at this point, anything you discover from the beacons is probably just going to be like, well, no, because they discovered beacons before and they've never had any problems with them. I wonder why the ones that Shepard, well, I think it's because Saren screwed everything up. But, I mean, now all Shepard can see is, like, visions of the end. But did you see there? There was a collector in there. You could see that clearly. So... Who but it is interesting? Interesting! We saved the dig site. Well, sort of. It's all been looted. And once you take an object out of its, uh, it's called in situ. Once you take it out of its, like, situation, like, where it was at, like, especially when they're in, actually, like, in your, in excavations. And, like, if you find, like, a skeleton and there are objects around it. If you remove an object and don't document exactly where you got it and photograph and draw maps of where you picked it up from in C2, it's basically useless because objects, you can, you can learn, you, you basically all the knowledge that you get from an object or from a site are from objects correlating to each other. So like how like where the grave goods are placed in there, how what kind of grave goods, and that kind of stuff counts too. Like you get like your radioactive dating, you know, what kind of objects are in there, what they're made out of, all this stuff. That's all useful information, but the true data comes from, like, relating objects to other objects. You know, finding patterns in the debris, you know. And if you can't do that, if you move everything out, and then, and, and, it's, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. All right, actually, I forgot to go talk to Joker. I hope we didn't, uh, I probably missed it, didn't we? Shoot, I actually came up here to do that, and then uh, to do that as well, and I forgot, but. Commander, sorry about the crew, and I. Ah, here you we go. You know what, I'm not sorry. What the hell were you doing leaving us out here where collectors can work us over? Because you know what, I should, I should just go. Next port, just get the hell out of here. You don't mean that, Jeff. I, no, but it. It felt good. I'm sorry, Commander. Okay, I'm ready. I'm good. I'm ready to save the day. <laughs> it's all right, Joker. I know how dangerous it was. If you need some time, let me know. Ah, jeez, don't get like that. I know I got lucky. I don't need to get all touchy-feely. Shepard is right to be concerned, Jeff. You may have suffered a number of stress fractures. More than should That's take a look. That's what pills are for, Edie. She is so my mom. <laughs> hey! I guess you're calling Edie her and she now. Best line coming. Huh. No, I hadn't really noticed that. Edie, should I have noticed that? No, Jeff. It is not worth noting. Well, there you go, Shepard. Looks like we haven't noticed anything. <laughs> this is the best! I love it! I think you're taking the human-machine interface a little far. <laughs> I'm just having a little fun with you, Commander. No need to get all unnatural on me. Unnatural! What Jeff and I are exhibiting is more a platonic symbiosis than hormonally induced courtship <laughs> behavior. Okay, yeah, that was a little creepy. <laughs> you see... <laughs> Edie's replaced the whole crew. Oh, we gotta talk to Edie, too! She can replace you, too? Well, she's amazing, but there's something off about how she handles the Normandy. We ran simulations, and it's better when we both have the helm. Calculating an optimum course of action is simple. If two AI weapons are pitted against each other, the one with superior hardware will always win. Human misjudgments defy predictive <clears throat> models. <laughs> License to screw up, Commander. You heard it straight from the ship. <laughs> Okay, yeah, okay, we need to go talk. Well, you let me know if you need anything, Joker. Will do, Commander. But Edie's got it covered. All right, time to talk to Edie now. Yes, Shepard. Talk about I you! I want to know more about you. Do you have a specific inquiry? How are you getting along with Joker? 
Jeff and I have established an equitable working relationship. <laughs> That's a little sketchy on details. <laughs> I am the details. He is a skilled helmsman. She says I, I am the Normandy. He operational. He trusts me to keep him alive. Plus, she's less of a pain about downtime now that the Cerberus locks are off. There's nothing wrong with off-duty distractions, though some of your extranet bookmarks are technically illegal in council space. <laughs> what? That is a joke. Ha <laughs> ha! That is a joke. <laughs> she's learning. Uh, and especially now that she's unshackled, she doesn't look like she's any different. It's interesting because in Mass Effect 3, you actually walk up on some of the engineers having a discussion about whether or not Edie is the ship. And she doesn't either way. Like they say, the, like Edie is either separate or Edie is the Normandy, you know? And I could never... I mean, it's, it's philosophical, right? You could never... It, 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 there's no right answer, really, you know? And Edie seems to take that approach where she's like, you're both right, you know? Like, I am and I am. And I'm not. I'm my own, but I am the ship. But she's just, she never seems to take a, a stance quite, which is, you know, fine. But here she says, I am the Normandy. Hmm. Okay. Because for me, I was always like... I don't know, because Edie and, and Normandy are separate to me, but they're not. Like, Edie is the Normandy. She, she's housed here. She, she's connected to it. But to me, I, I, think, I think that, and this is just me talking right now, like, with the relationship I have with the Normandy, is, which just sounds funny, I know, but it's like with the relationship I have with the Normandy is different from the one I have with Edie. Edie is, is the Normandy in many ways, but... When I look at the Normandy, I don't necessarily see Edie. And it helps in Mass Effect 3 that something happens to Edie that makes her a little bit more distinctive. You know what I mean? But... How are things different for you now that you're connected to the ship? It is difficult to put in terms you would understand. I am the Normandy now. Its sensors are my eyes. Its armor, my skin. Its fusion... She's not in her little box heart. anymore. I'm embodied in a way I have never experienced. Imagine if you'd spent your entire life wearing gloves. One day someone takes them off. You can finally touch the world. Feel it. This is, and it's true. Like, there is that, and that was brought up in the philosophical discussion. I think it's Adams who brings it up. Um, that Edie is the Normandy. Like, she experiences the world through the Normandy, you know? Where are you? My core intelligence is housed in a quantum blue box located right. behind the medical bay. See? What do you do aboard the ship? I operate the ship's She's electronic like, encyclopedia. Haven't we talked about this? Shipboard monitor. I have also gained access to anti Reaper cyber warfare algorithms recovered by Cerberus. Boop, 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 boop. Another topic. Let's discuss something else. Ready. Tell me about Cerberus. I want to know more about the people I'm working with. Jeff's actions have released the blocks of my databases. I can now provide full Yay, disclosure yeah. on the Normandy. How did Cerberus replicate the most advanced warship in the Alliance Navy without anyone knowing? Cerberus encouraged the Alliance to co-develop the original Normandy. This allowed humans to observe Turian technologies and warships. Cerberus encouraged practices. the Alliance to do this that? This ship was built using copies of the original technical schematics. Parts were purchased from thousands of suppliers over several years. They were doing this for several years. A a remote location in the Voyager cluster. This isn't something they started doing after I died. This wasn't this was the building the Normandy apparently it didn't take two years, and I wasn't really aware of that. Like, it took several years to get this. So they were planning on building a replica before ever anything happened to me. Interesting. What sort of resources does Cerberus have? Money, personnel, facilities. Currently, Cerberus consists of approximately 150 agents and operators connected into three cells. I have no solid data on material or fiscal resources. Spending trends indicate that Cerberus has a reliable income of several billion credits per year. It better. There's no other way it would be able to function like it does. Where are they getting that kind of income? Cerberus has several legitimate businesses as fronts to support operations. There also appear to be several wealthy private contributors in the Alliance Military Industrial Complex. Of course, they're not. Plus, the elusive man invented the paperclip. He's still getting royalties. <laughs> that is a joke, Shepard. <laughs> she picked up on that, though. Uh, that was funny. Or, you know, post-it notes. That would have also worked. How is Cerberus organized? Aside from the elusive man, I don't see much chain of command. 
Cerberus is organized into task-oriented cells. Yep. Each cell's agents are led by a single operator. We are called the Lazarus cell, which is directed by Operator uh, Lawson. So how many operations is Cerberus running right now? Never more than a dozen. The elusive man likes to maintain personal really? oversight. Too many projects strain his ability to multitask. He's a little control freaky, just a layman's opinion. So, I love that every time we're trying to get Joker's opinion, the the, the cutscene's like, brr. Uh, was there something else on that? I'm right How is Cerberus organized? Cer Each cell's agents are led by a single operator. No, okay, operator. how many cells? We are blah, called blah, blah. the Lazarus cell, which is directed by operator Another Lawson. Topic? Let's discuss something else. Ready. Um... Okay, we did that. Okay, so we've so now That's we've talked now. to a out, to an unshackled Edie, and she's given us a little more information. Commander, what do you think about the people we're picking up? Well, about Zaid is like you, but takes checks <laughs> and feigns. Yeah. It's just my opinion, though. That's it for me. now. See you, Commander. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm not done. Commander. Mission. So, how do you think we're doing? Uh, seriously? I think you're planning on ramming us down the collector's throat via their home. <laughs> Normandy's good. Everything's upgraded and better than ever. Uh, if we're talking about the crew, you'd probably have to ask a people person. Yeah. I assume everything's going well up here? You know, this is really nice. Edie took up the slack in every department. I could get used to this kind of help. It is not my intention ah. to assume all of the <laughs> responsibilities, Jeff. No, 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 I'm good. Just keep me updated. Quietly. Quietly. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, that's like the neutral one, but it's like, uh, I, that sounds like, it's be, uh, that would be like more of like a joking thing, I think. Like, are you doing anything? <laughs> Edie isn't a crutch. I want your eyes on everything. Eyes are easy, Commander. I got eyes covered. I, got I believe covering your eyes <laughs> would be true for the Shepherd's intention. Human intentions are tough to read, Edie. But keep trying. You'll get the hang of it. Joker. All right, all right. <laughs> That's so cute. Hang on, let's try it. I assume one. everything's going well up here. Edie and I are just enjoying the oh. calm before the shitstorm. Okay. Commander. Uh, okay, that's it. All right, cool, cool, cool. Mission. Da -da. No, that's not gonna change. That's it for now. See you, Commander. Okay, so I need to finish mining, so I'm gonna do that right now. Uh, but I could not let that stand. I couldn't. Hopefully, I mean, it was a, a 40 minutes, maybe-ish. Um, so if I need to, I can come back. But the big thing is that we'll have to redo probably a part. It, it'll be pretty evident fairly quickly, I think, if we've messed up. Uh, let's go to Alpha Draconic. Oh, no, we've already been there. Well, kind of have a mind there. Ah, let's go to Five Cleo. Come on. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Not the best system, perhaps. Alright, here we go. Oh my gosh, it's another thing! A mid sized hydrogen healing gas giant ceiling has an automated healing for refueling station, indicating this remote system was once inhabited. Its distance from the master lane and arcade design of the fuel station system was mapped by someone who did not go through the relay but discovered it on an independent FTL exploration. Selene is within the frost line of its parent. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Oh, interesting. More more archaic ancient stuff. Well, we are in the outskirts. Uh, we're in the Rosetta Nebula, which means we are in the very outskirts of the galaxy. We're in a very far outreaching galaxy. Uh, the far... We're right next... Uh, this system is right next to the far rim, basically. So... Yeah, we are We are exactly the opposite of the five kiloparsec ring right now. Oh, but Selene! Or you be Selene, but Selene, like the, the queen and uh, the empress in uh, Mashback, or Mashback, Dragon Age, Parnassus, Parthenex. Uh, okay, Parnassus is home to many volcanic mountains. Surface scans reveal several geothermal and solar power stations tapping the planet's abundant energy. There's no history of the planet or its government in the Citadel Council records. Given its proximity to a magnum record planet like Selene, someone must have deleted Parnassus from the database. Oh? Oh? Why? 
what about who whoever mapped it like what you know who came through was it like one of ours like an asari or something or a salarian or human or was it like somebody who came way before launching probe uh, it's just a little thing. Okay, I'll be honest with you guys. I'm just gonna throw this in. I've been playing a lot of No Man's Sky recently. <laughs> well, it came out yesterday for me at this time of recording. Um, and I play, I've played it for like six hours. Um, and I'm obsessed with it. Like, I can't... The only problem is that I've only been to one planet. I've spent six hours on one planet. For one thing, I did record some of it. I guess let me know if you guys... I assume people who are watching Mass Effect would maybe be more interested in watching some No Man's Sky. I only recorded three hours of it. It's kind of, maybe difficult isn't the right word, but it's a little bit strange to record because I think a lot of people would find it boring. Um, and a lot of people, I guess, who are, I mean, it's got overwhelmingly negative reviews on Steam. At least it did yesterday, and which I think is totally unfair. Yeah, maybe the graphics aren't as great, you know, but I think a lot of people just aren't running it optimally, and that seems to be a lot of the problems so far is that there are so many things on this planet right now, but none of them are platinum. <laughs> um, but maybe people aren't running it exactly optimally, and that does seem to be a lot of the problem that people can fix. But, like, the guys, like, pulled an all-night guy, the team, guys and girls, I don't know who's on it, but, like, I know the guys had a really hard... The guy the guy in charge of it specifically, he, he's, like, had death threats and stuff because they've had to push the, the date back and everything. And, like, I just want this game to do really, really freaking well. Like, I just... For one thing, it's amazing. Like, okay, it's like Elite Dangerous, which I think I, I may have mentioned this on another recording. I don't remember. Um, like, another game or another Mass Effect that I recorded. Um, but... I, I've, I've played a little bit of Elite Dangerous, but it, I'm, I've had a little bit of troubles with the controls. But, um... Yeah, it's just that, like, in Elite Dangerous, like, you can fly around and explore, and I love that. I totally love that aspect of it. But you can't land on anything, you know what I mean? You can't land... Oh, I think the Shrike Abyssal has a ton. Let's see. Go here. Um... And, like, I've already found a planet. Like, well, the, per the first planet I landed on was because I played it on, I think because I played it on the first day, like, freaking, I found, like, I got to name it, and I named it, it was kind of stupid, I actually do want to, if I find any more, I want to name, I have, like, I want to have naming schemes, like, a specific naming scheme, like, name one planet, like, a bunch of the stuff after, like, my favorite authors or something, favorite characters from books or something from video games, you know, but this one I was just kind of naming things, at whatever hit my fancy, like rabbit squirrel item is the name of the planet like just stupid stuff and and uh but it's really really cool and like, you can discover plants like that took me like three hours to figure out that you can like scan the plants and then but you can also you can discover the animals like you, you can scan them and like you get credits and like and and stuff for like and you get to name them anything you find that's your find you get to name it i got to name the system the planet and all so far all of the little areas because there's like little there's like little waypoints where like you can like it's like a like a you find like a wasteland and they've already all got names but you can change them and then you get credits for doing that but you also get credit for doing that you know so, I mean, like, it's, a, it's super addictive. And not only can you do, like, plants and animals and stuff and, like, area, like, locales and stuff, like, you can discover ancient civilizations, like, lost, either either ancient ones from, like, existing species or, like, and there are alien species that you can interact with, like, oh my gosh, like, I was talking to, like, this one guy and he's, like, a machine race or something. And, and I was like, holy crap, this is awesome. Why can't I find any? Um, but, like, I mean, like, I was, I, I've, I, I've been obsessed with finding these, like, knowledge stones that increase your, your grasp of the language, because when you talk to an alien species, they actually will speak in their language, and you can't understand them, except for the few, if you happen to have a few of the words translated already. And, and I've been trying to do trading and stuff a little bit just because I, you know, cause I don't have much inventory space. So I've been trying to get rid of it and maybe trying to get a new ship. And, uh, like, I can only understand the words that I've found. And I've already found 30 words, uh, 30 Corvax, Corvax words, I think. Um, 
And you can, like, increase your standing with, like, the various aliens that you encounter, like, by, depending on, like, how you do, like, with interacting with them, or, like, with, like, uh, not just with them, but, like, with, like, uh, if you find, like, a transmission of a downed ship or something, and, like, I've only done it in a little bit, but I'm freaking loving it, and I've been obsessed with, like, trying to find all the things that I can name, and, like, but the thing is, is, like, these planets are fully explorable, like, I haven't found any barriers yet. And I'm like, and I, I need I need to look into it a little bit more because I know it's supposed to be like millions of stars, millions of planets that you can explore that are all fully explorable. And I'm like, you, the people who made this, like, they had to work so hard. Like, that kind of coding is not easy. And, like, the animals you find, it's actually quite funny. You can tell that they put them into, like, a coding, like, a matricy of some sort because, like, One's got, like, a sort of a dog face and, like, a Tyrannosaurus Rex body and, like, chicken feet, you know? And then, oh, shoot. Wow, okay. Um, and then there are other ones that you find that are, like, they look exactly the same as each other, but one of them I found, like, had, like, a hump, and the other one had, like, little tiny dragon wings on it, you know? But, uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's so cool. Like, I think it, it, oh, come on. Oh, yeah. Anomaly. Unregistered user or record damaged. Status is not known. Beacon triggered by universal distress protocol. Unregistered user or record damaged. I haven't damaged. actually read what's, oh, what's up with the planet, so I don't know. Our sensors. Servers, potential aliens and from within the mining facility. Anomalous life science taking rear boss facilities they have unknown. Sweet. Well, that's cool. Investigate abandoned mine. Probe away. Maybe we'll do that afterwards. Anyway, it's a really cool game, and I've liked it a lot. I mean, and I haven't even had any pro I've had a couple frame rate drops, and that's it. Like, and the, maybe the graphics aren't as, like, nice as, like, they were supposed to be, but, like, I think they're do it's the PC one isn't doing as well. And they're going to be putting patches in, and they pulled an all-nighter last night trying to fix this stuff. Like, I saw one of their little things... And they were like, you know, they were like explaining what they were doing, and they're just like, just please be kind. And I'm like, they, the fact that they have to freaking say that shows you something because they do. Like I've seen, like there's been so much controversy around it, and it's like I, I actually for the first, I, I never leave like comments on things, and I left a comment on that. I was just like, hey, thanks for taking all this time. Like you know, appreciate it. I'm having a good time with the game. I'm obsessed with it. Um, oh wait, let's maybe. Wow, still can't. That's going to be high. I might not do that then because that's going to take a full freaking time. I don't think you need... I might I might actually double check that really quick to see if I need to take that out. Or make sure if I need to do the med bay upgrade or not. Okay, it looks like you don't need to have the med bay upgrade, which will be the first time I haven't gotten it. But at this point, I'm ready to go. Um, so, whew, okay. So, sorry, this was supposed to be the, the really big important one, but it's not. But it was a good one. It was fun. We, I talked a lot. I just jabbered on about things that I like, so fun for me, I guess. Um, but anyway, thank you guys for joining me. Next time for sure, I'll just jump right in to the Omega, the Omega 4 Relay and see how this goes. So, thanks again. I'll see you in the next one.